Wink Martindale, uh, two years with the New York Giants. Uh, I would say that not being an NFL guy anymore, I was fully entrenched and just deep in the NFL for years and years and years, but now I just kind of watch it on the side. So I'm not going to speak necessarily to what's going on with the Giants, but I understand it's an organization that anybody not performing as a coach, it uh, can't uh, necessarily be held against them. But certainly at Baltimore before that, uh, he put together some excellent defenses. So what are your thoughts about Wink Martindale joining uh, the Maize and Blue? Well, I think it's a good hire. So we'll get to the Giants first, I guess. Uh, yeah, obviously the connection to John Harbaugh with Baltimore, that defense that he's running there. Uh, and then with the Giants, that was a very unique situation. And he was there for a year. And I really think the big big thing there was their defense hadn't performed. It was performing better than their other units, uh, offense and special teams. But, I mean, the Giants have bare bones on, on, all, you know, on both sides of the ball. And their defense did not uh, – I guess, live up to the expectation of bringing in a guy like Martindale. And so when that happened, they were forcing turnovers. They were, uh, I think his last season, they were first in the NFL in turnovers, but then like every other major statistic, they were in the bottom third of the league, bottom quarter of the league. Uh, and so Michigan's going to bring him in. He's going to get a different situation, going to bring back a lot of key players. Uh, that's the expectation for now. I'll, you know, several key players on defense announced that they were returning. A lot of them were, sophomores turning into juniors as well and so we'll see if the portal when that you know that comes back around we'll see what happens after spring we'll see you know if uh if if someone d decides to leave or not but so far the feeling's pretty good I think a guy like Martindale brings a lot of experience defensive players tend to like the older guys uh the the wise guys the guys who who have a lot of experience and can impart uh some new knowledge and, and information onto these defensive players who are, I think historically, you know, uh, the way that the league is working now in the NFL and the NCAA is young offensive coordinator defense, young, older, it doesn't really matter, but uh, Michigan fans might get a little scared with the Don Brown, uh, you know, guy who blitzes a lot, a lot of experience, very well liked uh, Martindale, very much the same. Uh, he does like to blitz a lot, but his defense is a very different structure than what Don Brown ran. Um, and you're going to see some similarities to what Jesse Minner and Mike McDonald ran, who are, are now both in the NFL, obviously, and McDonald, the head coach at Seattle, Minter leaving for the Chargers with Jim Harbaugh. Uh, but and, and I guess that brings up Klinkscale leaving as well. But Martindale is going to have his scheme, get the players in the right head space. I think they're going to like him. Uh, it's going to be a matter of now you lose Klinkscale. What's the recruiting going to look like? Uh, and that's probably the big concern. Yeah, so let's uh, transition. Uh, we just saw this actually happen at uh, the University of Alabama, where their soon-to-be offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb, left for an NFL job without having fully uh, taken this Alabama job. Bill O'Brien takes the offensive coordinator position at Ohio State. He's on the job for three weeks. He gets a better offer, closer to home, family, pay increase, of course, as a head coach at Boston College. You didn't see this years ago. There are guys, this is a fairly regular thing now, guys that get jobs a couple days after the season, leave that job, go to the next job, don't even start the next football season or on the job for two, three weeks, and they're moving on to a better offer. Yeah, part of that is the way that it's set up with, uh, you know, Jeff Halfley at Boston College leaves the NFL. Uh, Grubb goes to Seattle with McDonald. Uh, but it's a scheduling thing. I think that's a huge issue in the NCAA football world uh, and just how it aligns with the NFL in their season. And that that some of that is just coincidence. Uh, but the NCAA schedule is not good. And it, it does set up for players and teams to have to make decisions in untimely manners. Um, ways that and what I mean by that are not beneficial to necessarily them or the people around them. Bill O'Brien was a unique situation because. He thought, you know, he didn't think the Boston College job was going to open up, and and there it did. And he now gets a chance to be a head coach after having what like six years off from doing that. Uh, and I think that's his region of the country. He's from that area, uh, generally that part of the the U.S. So I think he'll do well there. But you're right, there's a different th feeling. A, a part of it is the scheduling. Part of it is the way uh, that college football is shaped right now. And and in a large part because 
like we're seeing coaches jumping to the NFL. And I think it goes back to Halfley with that. And, and now you're seeing Harbaugh, you know, grabbing a, a good chunk of Michigan staff and that's shuffling things around. And some of those positions haven't been hired yet. So other teams are going to have to wait and see what goes on there. And you bring in Martindale, who I think, uh, you know, we'll look at the history here a little bit. So he coached obviously with Jim's brother, John, uh, but before that he coached with Jack Harbaugh at Western Kentucky years and years ago, I'd have to check what position it, it might've been coordinator. Yeah. He was defensive coordinator and uh, inside linebackers coach at Western Kentucky. They won an FCS national championship while he was there. So now he's coached with John and Jack. It, it seems like you got something to throw in as well. Well, you bring up Western Kentucky because uh, of course, uh, with all these coaching changes, we've gone live a few times and start picking apart and looking these guys up, but we're going back 21 years is the last time he coached in college football. It's a lot of great jobs with the Raiders, the Broncos, and on through the line. But 2003 with Western Kentucky, that's that's interesting that he's getting back into the college game after all that time. Yeah, it is interesting. And I think for a while there, he was looking for a head coaching gig. And now, I, you know, I don't know what the interest is in the draw from him. I don't. Uh, as we've talked about, there are a lot of coaches who are leaving to the NFL. And so for a guy who is a, in, like, ingrained NFL coach probably could have taken a defensive coordinator job this year and next. I don't know how many looks he's getting, uh, but he's very highly thought of. And so now he's deciding, Hey, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to try this thing out. Uh, I think it's interesting. I do think it's a good hire for Sharon Moore to have a vet like him that he can lean on a guy who's been around the block uh, as a coach on that side of the ball. That's not really, you know, Sharon Moore's uh, cup of tea. And, and so he gets a guy that he can say, go do your thing. Now, the interest is when you talk about a coach who hasn't coached in the collegiate level for over t or about 20 years now, um, you got to wonder, what does that look like recruiting wise? And Michigan didn't really ask Mike McDonald or M Jesse Minner to get on the recruiting trail. So my guess is they're not really going to ask Wink Martindale to get on the recruiting trail that much either. That's just my assumption. Uh, obviously, you have to play your role and you do have to visit with guys and talk with some guys. But the key recruiters are the position coaches. And so we'll see how that goes as well. Um, but yeah, it is a strange, strange thing to see a guy, you know, come back uh, to the collegiate level after 20 years. Those NFL guys, a lot of them really like the life in the NFL, but here he is. And there's also a dynamic that you hit on there, Nelson, in regards to really knowing your coaching staff and seeing how they fit together with their strengths. And I won't call them weaknesses, but maybe things that they have an experience because they've been in the NFL or because, Hey, let's face it. They're really good at what they do on the practice field and in the film room, but they haven't been the best recruiter. Uh, but we're really strong. These guys kill it. These other three guys that are position coaches kill it on the recruiting trail. And, and everybody brings their own skill set and backgrounds to it and that's another fit it's almost like an offensive line where you just don't take the five best guys and athletically and throw them on the field because up oh, we don't have a center so mm -hmm. that's a problem um you you fit together the coaching staff in such a way and again it's not a science it's there's a lot of uh, art to it uh to get it right and and then cross your fingers when that that it all meshes yeah there is and uh, you know, you look now that Steve Klingscale is leaving to the Chargers, uh, you wonder initially, because he has been such a great recruiter, uh, when, when Martindale gets hired, you're thinking, okay, well, that would be, that's a great balance. Uh, and then he leaves. So now Michigan's gonna have to fill those spots. We talk about defensive line, secondary coach or DB's coach, uh, linebackers coach that might be Martindale's he's going to, he might take on that title. I'm not sure as well, but we'll see there. Uh, I really think you probably want to get someone in that room who's going to recruit. But yeah, I mean, like you talk about the fit thing. And so now Michigan is going to also have to fill those spots in uh, one guy, a defensive line uh, coach that we've been sort of hearing about is Greg Scruggs over at Wisconsin. So he is a young guy as well. Uh, he's 33, uh, but he was in the NFL from, I think he was drafted in 2012 by the Seahawks and he spent five, four, five, six years in the league, and now he's left, and he has been coaching. Uh, he got right into coaching, and Wisconsin just hired him last season uh, in 2023 as their defensive line coach. So 
if Michigan is able to hire him away, you think that balance the young and the old, you get a guy who, uh, like Scruggs, will get on the recruiting trail. And I that that's an underrated component to the, today's game is – the way that coaching works right now is you have to be to be at least able to recruit and keep up in that area. I think you have to be younger or at least young enough to and have enough energy to get out there and do it. It's not an easy, not an easy thing to do, and the lifestyle is not fun. Uh, it's twenty four seven, and uh, it's at every level of of college sports. It really is. And you talk to any level of coach, any any uh, any type of sport, and they're. Always, if they're a good program, they're always talking about recruiting. It's kind of funny, uh, but that's the reality. So if you get a guy like Scruggs, uh, who is maybe the lead candidate right now, we'll see if that plays out to be that way. Uh, you have a chance to uh, go out there and, and recruit some good players, and he isn't that far removed from playing at the collegiate or the NFL level. So he also has that connection and that bond you're able to build with players, but he also understands – uh, what it's like to be out there. Some coaches lose uh, the understanding of what it's like to be in the games. And that's that's why uh, you look at a team like like the Lions, I think, and, and th- the Detroit Lions in the NFL, that's a coaching staff full of former players. And that plays out pretty well, or that works out pretty well because they understand what the players are going through and they can work with them in that area. So I do think, uh, and Shrone Moore, former player, right? Uh, so I do think that they're going to go out and look for guys who get it and have probably played or uh, have been around people who've played or a coach like Jesse Minner was around. His dad was a coach for a long time. Uh, they brought his dad on the staff for a little while. So uh, you you look for guys who either are younger and have that experience, have been around programs, teams, coaching, uh, or a guy who has played and uh, I think if they get scrubbed that'd be a great hire so we'll see how that goes Nelson we all may also underestimate this transfer portal and the amount of work that that puts on these coaches because yeah. I just keep going back to what I used to hear coaches say years ago and when I say years ago I mean like three years ago not a long time ago where They didn't have to worry about anybody else's teams. They didn't think about anybody else's teams. They were so laser focused on, I just know my team. I'd hear coaches get asked about other teams and they would just say, well, I'm, I'm aware I have a relationship with that coach. So he's doing a great job. I'm sure. But they had no idea who was playing for anybody else. All they cared about was their team and their next opponent. That's all they scouted. That's all they knew. But I just have to imagine with this transfer portal, these coaches have to watch game film on all these guys. They, they're they just not going to a website and figuring out, okay, rivals 247 and these other people think that they're good, so we're just going to grab them. No, they, they are scouting them like they scout high school players. So mm-hmm. they got to throw in the game film. They got to watch, 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 watch all these transfer possibilities. And then they got to go recruit them like they're high school players in a sense. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh- hiring for a general manager position uh, within the football program to help facilitate those sorts of things. Obviously they want to expand the recruiting department. Uh, That's been talked about. Uh, But the GM position is interesting because it handles the NIL stuff. And I think that offloads some of that concern for other coaches. Uh, That's what the job description is. At least that's going to be part of it is, is handling NIL um, partnerships and dealing with donors and, that sort of thing. But you're right. It does bring an added component. And on top of that, you have to self recruit. It's kind of ridiculous, but you do. And you have to worry about tampering in a program like Michigan, maybe not as much as some of the smaller schools, but the, the lack of fencing around this issue right now, or the lack of enforcement, at least by the NCAA is really hurting some of the smaller programs. Uh, even just smaller ones within a conference, right? And so that's a concern. Uh, the job is getting harder, like you're talking about, and you can't just be focused on your team and the guys you're trying to bring into your team that are in high school, right? You have to focus on everything and everybody all at the same time, and it's just a lot to ask for coaches. Check out Nelson's work, Maize and Blue Review. 
Anything in particular we need to know about what you've got going on there, Nelson? Well, I, I haven't, you know, I've got all that going on, just regular stories and stuff, but I did start a uh, radio show and podcast. Uh, so if you want to listen to that, it's called the SPO Radio Show, Sports Plus Opinion uh, is what it's called. And that's on every platform. It comes out Wednesday, usually early afternoon. We record it in the morning. We go live. Uh, and if you want to listen to that on Radio FX, you could do that. Find the live stream there. Uh, the whale radio. Uh, but yeah, uh, SPO radio show sports plus opinion. That is something I've just started a few weeks ago and I think it's a long-term project. It seems like something that I want to keep going uh, for as long as I can. Uh, so yeah, listen to that on Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you want to find it. But other than that, that's the only new thing I think to go over. Nice. 